going to discuss what in the world we want to be as a core and what we don't want to be as the core. Now, I do want to talk about what are some of the worst ways we could possibly be. First, let me say this, okay? For, for a lot of you um, who don't know me very well, there's several of you who don't know me very well, I just want to say this right off the bat because every single person that has gotten to know me, every one of them has said, man, when I first met you, you scared the death out of me. <laughs> the life out of me, maybe? Scared me, scared me to death? No. <laughs> Don't be intimidated by me. I am such a teddy bear. Like, <laughs> people most of the time just make lots and lots of fun of, of me, and I laugh, and I love it, and don't be afraid of me. Like, I'm totally approachable. <laughs> I know what it is to be very hurt. I know what it is to um, go through really, really rough times, and I don't want you to have to go through a rough time without me helping you. I just want to be of service. I want to help. I want to love you. So it's okay if I'm big and bald and scary. Uncle <laughs> Phil. Whatever. That's fine. But don't be afraid of me. Do your best not to be afraid of me, because I'm not going to hurt you. I promise. Which is what all the people who hurt people say. I you were you into my van with a piece of candy or something? Okay. You need your Wi-Fi in This turn. Oh yeah. There you go. There you go. I'll lure you in by saying I have free Wi-Fi. Okay. Okay. So. Um. All of us have. Uh, experiences with um, the body of Christ, with what it is to be um, a Christian, and some of us have not had good experiences with that. Some of us have had terrible experiences with that. Here's the truth. College students, here's, here's just a little stat for you. 80% of people who grew up in the church leave the church during their college years. There's reasons for that. What are the reasons why 80% of people who grew up in the church leave the church during their college years? You tell me. Go. They have a choice now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll. Uh, liberation from home? Is that what you said? Liberation from home? What did you say, Zach? They can choose if they go to church. Okay. I think that'll be under the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not what else? Not Yeah. Not but they don't have a schedule of oh, I have a cold with my house, or one to on. They don't have support. Yeah. Um, so the church doesn't provide adequate support for college students. Uh, yeah, you know uh, 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 somebody appreciate children to go to church. I think sometimes uh, church gets a back seat when you're so busy with school and you don't get party. And also, um, people play, it's a good and a bad reason, but some people force their children to go to church even if they don't want to, but the parents don't, don't, don't explain why they need to. They say you need to go because Jesus done this for you. He done that for you. They, they don't say it in a very loving way. So parents force you to go to church, but they don't live their faith out. Yeah. Sin is everywhere in college. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the worst that I want to make. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's Sin City. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's not the worst that I want to do. It's a lot of. Uh, yeah. We get into it. Yeah. College equals Sin City. Okay. And then to build on that, we don't go to church because we feel bad because we were sinning. Ooh, that's a good Ooh. one. Oh, you that's see that? Yeah, that's like a big one. Man, I that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
I'm sorry, Deanna. There was something going on here. I'm talking about gummy bears or something <laughs> completely unrelated to, to the, the point of value that you had. Okay. So what was it? Uh, they don't go to church because they've been hurt in past church experiences. Been burnt. That's a good way. To Double knees. Ooh. Yeah. So, like, you look at this. So you you look at these two parents didn't live out their faith. They've been burnt by church experience. So it's like once they do have the liberty, then it's like they're gone the second they got it. Amy. <laughs> you know, my favorite color of snake is green. What's your favorite color of snake? Um, what's the, is it red, yellow, and black, isn't that the, the, yeah. the poison? Yeah. yeah, and then if the pattern is off. Amy, I just want you to know he's making a point. Oh, okay, sorry, Amy. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, I talked about it. You're an authority figure. Yeah, I know. I'm going to screw up. Church isn't relevant, or it doesn't seem relevant. There you go. Um, what is what is missing in the typical American church that makes it not relevant to college? Money. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a real answer. Um, yes, Keegan. But then you go to someone else because I forgot it because she made a super joke. <laughs> Good answer too. Understanding the younger culture. It's not having, with my church, there was nobody my age except for me. So it's having, like, my own people around. Like yeah. I think part of it is because our culture has become so diverse. Yeah. Meaning that, like, you know, not only is the world more connected, meaning, like, different religions, different influences, but when you go to college, you know, there's not, most of the time, there's not, like, a, you can't go and take a Christian class. I mean, a lot of times, I think there is one here. Like, you go to philosophy, you go to sociology, you go to biology, you get all these different views on science versus religion versus ethics, you know, and then you, you get so plugged in your mind, you're like, I just want to go with what the majority believes or what's taught in school versus what right. I learned in the church. Is what. Yeah. So, the majority believe today, what's the majority believe today? God is dead. Nothing happens after you die. Well, I need more of science or no, you, you more of I think like people believe that the church like has strong opinions and views on certain topics that society has accepted, um, and I think that's why like, the church needs to start like loving certain people or certain ideas instead yeah. of like criticizing them. Right. So the church has not accepted. Let's see. The okay. How about this? Judgmental. Okay, so the, the church is judgmental uh, of, or, or maybe the church is not judgmental. Ooh, interpretation. But it is assumed, or that's the way the church is portrayed. For instance, for instance here's just a little tidbit for you. When we were in um, Ohio, because we took an awesome trip to Ohio, to Cedar Point, the roller coaster capital of the world, it was legit. <laughs> when we were there, the Republican National Convention was going on, and the pastor came back from the Republican National Convention at the church we were staying at, and he said that um, all the media was there, of course, you know, Trump was there and all that. And they, there, there was a group of like 20 people out of 30,000 people that were there there was a group of 20 people that were protesting Trump like making ruckus and what the media displayed the following morning was that the whole thing was like that so they put the, the 20 people that were making a ruckus in front you know and they portrayed it as if and they put the massive crowd behind them and it looked like everybody was doing that so the media can definitely spin things, and the media definitely has done this. They've made us look like garbage for sure. 
Westboro. <laughs> Precisely. They take Westboro and they make Christianity be the whole thing. Excuse me. All right. I'm like, Sneeze. I don't remember. I don't remember their names, but there were those two brothers that had the show on um, with the HGTV. It was like a home improvement show, and they ended up getting kicked off because they said something Christian. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah. Anyway, the the point is, it's kind of. I'm just kind of trying to expound on what you're saying. But they were put on. Um, they, so they went on TV and had these like news appearances, and um, so one thing that we all probably know about a lot of American news media is a lot of it tends to be very, very liberal. You know, liberalism creates good stories, right? So um, it was kind of fun, not fun, but weird, to see these two guys, like I watched them on an interview on CNN, and there's this reporter, really, she's really kind of like, you can see she's trying to pick them apart, and you know, CNN is one of the most liberal out there, like they're as bad as it gets, you know? So she's like trying to pick them apart, you know, they're trying to call them like, haters of homosexuality and Islam, and what they're trying to preach is, you know, that, no, they love everyone. They, they, we're taught to love everyone, right? But they don't necessarily agree. And then the media is like, that's an obvious thing, but, you know, people that aren't Christians aren't going to understand that. So, you, you're, you know, I was just trying to expound upon what you're saying is the media takes all kinds of things that, and if you're not a follower of Christ, you can be very, it's very, you're very susceptible to being misled by yeah. the media, and we do look like garbage, so... Or you look at the amount of, like, the Duggars. Everybody know who the Duggars are? The, what is it, 19 and counting or 20 and counting or whatever? Anyway, um, yeah, they, holy cow, the publicity once Josh fell apart, the oldest son fell into the, um, the drugs, the alcohol, I don't know. No, he was addicted to sex, so he kept having a prostitute. Yeah, yeah, Ashley Madison, yeah, yeah, so he, yeah, he fell apart, and my goodness, did that just, the publicity that got, whereas before, all the good stuff before, yeah, just, uh, not so much, trying to pick it apart, and yeah, they're, anyway, okay, so, all right, well, we went on a tangent with that one, um, okay, let me ask you this, have you ever felt this from your own church? No. Yes. Yes. Or past churches, yes. How have you felt that? Uh, well, I go to a really good church. I go to New Life. But our head pastor, Kurt, can come on like really strong. And so I think sometimes just the way that I interpret whatever he's saying, because he carries a lot about like what's true instead of, I don't know. So I think sometimes like the pastor or like the head pastor or whatever, or whatever, whoever's teaching or like they can come on strong even though they're not being strong, but they can come on judgmental and then you feel judged, but really it's like not that way. That makes sense. Yes, with some people, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle, Dana, Diana, Diane. I'm working on it. Michelle, sorry, go ahead. Um, I don't know what denominations are in here. I'm not saying anything against it. Uh, but I felt judged going to an apostolic church because I didn't speak in tongues. Okay. And so it was really difficult uh, because everyone just kept looking at me and kept saying that. I didn't receive the Holy Spirit, and even though the verses they were, it was just, I feel like I fit in. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, MVP. Um, I went to a youth group, and it was really good. Like, I loved our youth group, but at the same time, like, all the girls were, like, really pretty, and, like, they were all, like, and I'm just, you know. And so, <laughs> that's <laughs> all good. So, uh, it was like, oh, girl, I can't be like those girls. Like they're too, like they're like they're like wearing these like cute boots that aren't even Uggs, <laughs> but like they're cute. And like I'm over here with my rugged Jesus sandals, and like <laughs> it was just like so. I was like, I don't fit in. How do I fit in here? I don't. I don't belong here. <clears throat> 
I think Aaron had his hand up first. I, I was just going to say Amy, you know, fitting. I'm not Amy. Or, I'm sorry, I'm Megan, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Pratt. Yeah, Pratt, thank That's you. That's what happened there. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. happened. Um, so I want to say that, you know, if, if you don't fit into a Christian group because of how you look, then they're not really a Christian group. Fitting into a Christian group is fitting into God. Fitting into faith. Preaching. So, just let you know. Preach. Straight up. Preach. Take May I reverse the question? Yes. Okay. There has been times where because of things, I'm going to say things I misinterpreted about faith, I have I feel guilty because I know I have judged other people and I think that's wrong and I don't and there's times where I feel very um down on myself because you know I can walk into a situation and be like oh well that's not how I should feel that that's not right you know you should be accepting no matter what you know but so I feel like things I misinterpreted about faith I feel like I have judged other people so I want that it, it can be a two-way street and I think that's kind of where sometimes we can get a bad name Misinterpretations we have about absolutely certain biblical if we do end up yeah if we do end up kind of being judgmental ourselves and condemning of other people rather than loving them right where they're at and helping them take the next step. Jamie, right. like the church I grew up on, like the church I grew up in, like and culture, like it felt like you had to dress up for church all the time, and I I, I didn't always I don't want, I ain't always like dressing up for church. Especially like, isn't it the African American culture I come from? Like you, like you got, oh, oh it be a, why, oh, why you got in this suit? Why you got on this? Why you got on that? I might leave that person alone. Like, I just like going to church isn't about like um, representing good people. What you got to have like jury and stuff. That's that's for uptight people. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yes. Anyway, um, I had people ask me, uh, like, like before I left the house, uh, just because I look very nice, like in my, like my parents' house, like they got mad because I, I ain't wore a, a nice jacket. I wore a ragged jacket. I'm like, what's going? On, what's going? On church got to do with me dressing up? Right. I just, I ain't like that. Right. I just think. Sorry. You're good, you're good. Sorry. Going along with the choice of dress and stuff, I've had friends who were um, scared to come to church with me because I've had like Gothic friends and they weren't wearing any like anti religious stuff or anything. They were just in a lot of black and sometimes right. wearing skulls and stuff. And they said they were scared to go to church because everybody they said they got into one church and they tried to expel the demons out of them and they <laughs> 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 Fun fact, God wow. can be Christians too. That's true, that's <laughs> true. Fact. That is a fun fact. Yeah. Okay, so where does, when we are judgmental of other people, when the church is judgmental of other people, how does it make them <clears throat> view us? People are turned off to Christianity. Like, there's people that drop the hat can be... Like literally turned off. Like the smallest thing for some people, it can be like boom. There's no God, just because they had one minor, two major experience with right. the church. Right. Amen. I do because like like we Jehovah Witnesses, uh, or we just talk out to so our own group of uh, brainwash or something. <laughs> 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 brainwash you. Yeah. Believe. Okay. When when. So taking the Westboro example, taking the Westboro example and how that we've, we've been portrayed that way, what does it, how does it make, how do you view the Westboro group? Radicalists? What's the Westboro group? The Westboro group are the, the people that um, they protest. protest virtually everything. So like when the tsunami hit, uh, they went over there and they were carrying signs like, God did this to punish you people, and then any like um, gay parade celebration, they go there with signs, God hates fags, stuff like that, just really judgmental, really. But they're like considered Christians? Precisely, like, they should not be considered Christians, but that's, yeah, it gives us a bad rap, for sure. Christian people, or a, they call themselves Christians, and the media well, they, they that's call, what Christians yeah. are, but they're it's, it's misinterpretation to the extreme. Is yeah. what well, they, view it as. they call themselves a Baptist church, and the Baptist church even said they're not Christian. So that's right. pretty much, you know, 
That's pretty much. They're just a hate group, basically. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they create at soldiers' funerals and say, "Praise God for dead soldiers." You know, so they're right. kind of right. They're just. Yeah, yeah, they're terrible. It's an outlet to be terrible people, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're hiding under the freedom of religion. There's another one. Yeah. That's um, so when when I see Westboro on on television, I think about how. The rest of this school out there, everybody that's not here, that's investing in their, in the truth, everybody out there and what they may think of Christianity, what I know is that they don't view Christianity for what it actually is. They think it's something that it's not, which is the gospel. Like, what, because the truth is, how many of you have ever felt like, in order for me to go to heaven, I have to be good enough. Okay? Feeling like I have to attain in order to... Okay, so like, this is what gets said a lot. This is what a lot of people think. And the reason they think this is because... A lot of it is because of how judgmental the world is. Or the, how judgmental um, the church is portrayed. So they think um, that when a church says you shouldn't be gay and they're exposing your sin and all that stuff, then they're thinking, oh, so you're saying you're better than me? Like, I'm accusing you. You can't be this way. That means in order for you to go to heaven, you have to be like me. You have to be righteous like me. You have to be um, sinless. Righteous, pure. But then, when they look at that, they go, Shh, are you kidding me? Like, you, you are not as righteous as you think. You know, you're being judgmental, you're being hateful, you're being whatever. And so they go, no, I don't want anything, I don't want any part of that, because you're such a hypocrite, you know? So then, what people think is they go, okay, um, here's my list of bad things that I've done. And here's my list of good things that I've done. And in order to get to heaven, the good list has to be longer than the bad list. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make it because it's longer than, than the bad. Truth is, this is absolutely incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. Awesome. It is not about being good enough at all, because you're not. There is not a single person in the world that is good enough. I'm not good enough. You're not good enough. Billy Graham isn't good enough. <laughs> Nobody you can think of that is absolutely amazing and wonderful, they're not good enough. And the reason they're not good enough is because they've done some, just a little bit, of bad. And if you've got just a tiny bit of bad, that means... You're not good enough. Because God is absolutely perfect. He's absolutely holy. He can't have any tiny little blemish at all in his presence. So, what fixes this problem? Jesus. Bingo. And what did Jesus do? He died for us. Indeed. So, then, Jesus comes along. And he wipes out our bad. And takes all the sin on his shoulders. So, how many of you ever felt guilty before? Okay. Why do you feel guilty? Because he's nobody bad. Because <laughs> you did something bad. <laughs> I've done wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You feel guilty. You feel in deserve you, you, that you deserve some sort of punishment. The truth is, you do but you don't get punished. The only reason you don't get punished is because of what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross to cover every single one of your sins. And when he died on the cross to cover every single one of your sins, it is not just that he covered all the sins you've already done. He covers all the sins you'll ever do. So from all the way from the day you were born until the day you die, Every single one of those sins is absolutely 100% covered. You don't have to worry about 
your list of bad being too long. All you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior, dedicate your life to following him, you're good to go. You're a child of God, and he won't ever let you go. Um, so, if there's anybody in this room that would like to talk more about that, please do. We'll be having some lunch. Any questions or comments about that? Keep but I think it should, um, and I, I guess I don't know if anyone, everyone in here knows this, but this is something that I'm going to say because it affected me in a positive way is that when I first started on my journey of coming like back to you know all of this basically, <clears throat> one thing that was brought up to me by my by a teacher of mine and later a coworker was that um as you I'm sorry as people we uh we take sin and we categorize it we say okay for example murder is worse than telling a little white lie mm -hmm. and what I learned is that to to God. Or I guess Jesus, the whole same person. I guess I don't know why I said that, but it's the same thing. Sin is sin. Murder to him is the same thing as telling a lie, and that affected me because I always thought that should Jesus categorize. I thought that if I went out and murdered somebody, that was going to put me in worse fare with God than lying to someone. Right. And it's kind of and that's a misconception I think a lot of people have, and it's because of the way as humans we choose. To categorize our moral activity, so I, I figured that was something good to say. Uh, there is someone on YouTube that I I'm, I'm love watching. His name is Jefferson Bethka. He's a Christian he preacher, and he does um, YouTube videos helping this stuff. And one thing that I love what he preaches is that he says, as Christians, the most basic thing to survive as humans is we need to be vulnerable, but that's why a lot of pe people look as Christians as just mental, because we act, they think we act holier, holier than thou, mm -hmm. but we need to be vulnerable and say, you know what, sometimes I don't feel like reading the Bible, and sometimes it's hard to get to church when I'm too tired, but, you know, like, you have to be completely open with people, and people will see how real you are, and they won't that's an excellent point because that I think is probably one of the biggest problems with Christianity and the way that society sees Christianity is they think they're just a bunch of holier than thou. And the truth is we're not. We just understand the one thing, I'm not good enough. And I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody because I'm not. I just know my position is I have sinned and I have got to find some way to cover that. And I can't cover it on my own. I think um, people are also scared to take communion. And Jesus uh, gave us communion to help us. Um, okay, so I went gambling last weekend and I felt really bad about it. So I, I went to church and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I took my communion and I'm going to start again. Problem is, this weekend's a big gambling weekend. So I'm going to fall off this horse again. <laughs> I'm going to then pray, God, please help me stay strong, take my communion, and go on again. So don't be afraid to take communion. That's one thing that churches judge on. Oh, if you haven't been baptized, you can't take communion. That's between you and Christ. So just remember that one. I'm going to pull up like I don't know. I ain't like when I was a kid taking communion. I used to like take it because I was hungry in church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah.